so years ago. Let's look at the tradition of alchemy, the occult tradition known as alchemy. Again, this came out of the Egyptian tradition. So it's going to have a lot of uh, similar teachings regarding morality. And ultimately, that's what, again, to reemphasize, it's what all these traditions were about, teaching morality to their adherents, teaching the difference between right and wrong, and teaching how natural law operates so we could transform from a being that is in ignorance of that knowledge to a being that is actually enlightened to that knowledge and then could practically put that knowledge into work in real life. So, I call this section alchemy out of darkness and into light. Alchemy literally means from chem. Al is a prefix that means from or related to or out of. And then chem, of course, meant black in uh, ancient Egyptian and was often the name used for Egypt. So it was from darkness, out of darkness. Alchemy is an occult tradition taught through allegories. An allegory, again, is a cryptic story, poem, or picture that can be interpreted or decoded in order to reveal a hidden meaning, meaning typically a moral lesson. Again, as we were breaking down those statues in the Comitian tradition, allegorically, what lesson were they trying to communicate to people by building statues? And you'd have to know the background of the story of these gods to really be able to decode uh, you know, what the allegory is. You know, showing that statue to somebody who's never heard of Horus, Osiris, or Isis wouldn't really do much. But if you understand the verbal traditions and the written stories about those gods, then you understand what they represented and the allegory can be decoded. That's how occultism works. It works through relational and correlative thinking. So, uh, the, alchemy is taught through allegory through symbols and allegory, as many occult traditions are. In the tradition of alchemy, it is asserted that all base modes of human consciousness, which are called base metals in alchemy, again, uh, in alchemy you're dealing with the transmutation of metals from one form into another form. But they're not really talking about metals. Okay? They're talking about qualities of human consciousness. That's what these metals are. They're modalities of consciousness. So it's taught that the base modalities of human consciousness, or base metals, are actually imperfections of pure consciousness, or what the alchemists symbolically called gold, gold consciousness. And that all metals are ordained by nature to become the perfect, quote, gold of the sun, or in other words, enlightened consciousness, or enlightened beings. The alchemist then seeks to remove from his or her thoughts emotions and actions, their disorderly imperfections or base characteristics in order to bring them to their true state of natural order, in other words, harmony with natural law, and to transmute them into, quote, alchemical gold, which again represented the purification of mind, body, and spirit. Now notice this is again an apophatic tradition. It works through a negative pathway. You're starting with something and you are breaking it down and removing the impurities. You're not adding something to it, you're taking away something that is already there. And this is representative of we are polluted with so much bad information, with bad programming, with beliefs that don't serve who we really are, with beliefs that don't give us an accurate understanding about how nature and the laws of consciousness work. So we need to get rid of those impurities, to, to, get, to take them away from ourselves, to break them down and to decalcify that which has become rigid and hardened. And it's, it's like ossified like bone. And that's what the hardened ego is like. And it's to break that down and to carry it away, to dissolve it and remove those impurities. Some of the symbols in the uh, symbolic um, tradition of allegory very simple, basic, rudimentary ones. There's so many of them, you can get lost in them all. But um, there were uh, elemental forces that the alchemists wanted to convey uh, information about and basically define. And they had a symbol for them, and then they interpreted that allegorically. And here's some basic ones. The symbol of Earth, um, an inverted 
uh, equilateral triangle with a line going through about the uh, uh, two-thirds point if you take the measure from the base to the, to the apex. Um, the symbol of Earth represented inherent characteristics of the being, uh, their talents and resources that they may have developed or that they had a, a proclivity to or an inclination toward. Perhaps something that was um, inherent, that they maybe came in with uh, a tendency for. So air represented the intellect, and that is the pure intellect, meaning the, the left brain modality, our ability to compute, our ability to um, define things logically, our ability to break things down, analyze, etc. Water, the um, inverted triangle, represented emotion, intuition, and creativity. Again, that sacred feminine essence, dealing with largely emotion and the sacred feminine qualities. And then fire, an upward pointing triangle. Again, we've uh, seen that inverted triangle in water representing the chalice, uh, called the chalice in many older symbolic traditions. And uh, the element of fire in alchemy was the upright pointing triangle, which represented the blade, or again, a rud rudimentary masculine phallic symbol represented, representing action, willpower, and courage. Okay, the actual ability to create change within oneself and to go out and create change in the world. <clears throat> then there was a fifth element. So you have earth, air, water, and fire, and then you had the quintessence, meaning the fifth essence. The fifth element was spirit, represented by a solar wheel with eight spokes, uh, a circle and then an eight-spoke eight cross in the middle of it. This represented the divine spark or the divine essence within all of us. You know, the essence of the source or the creator, the underlying intelligence in nature, which is ultimately present in everything within nature, including us. Alchemists speak of something called prima materia or starting matter. Starting substance is what prima materia was. Again, the starting substance is the human being that needs to be purified, that needs the impurities removed from them so that they can come to a more clear and accurate and de-occulted understanding of the laws of nature. The starting substance or prima materia is used at the inception of the alchemical work, the beginning. Silver is considered to be one of the starting substances. There are others, but silver is one of the main uh, sources of prima materia in alchemy. The alchemical symbol for silver is the moon, or is associated with the moon. Because silver represented in alchemy the feminine aspects of the human psyche, including the attributes of intuition, inner wisdom, compassion, open-mindedness, and contemplation. And that's what you need to begin. You need that sense of open-mindedness, of desire, of willing to learn willing to open yourself up and receive. Okay, the truth is always out there, but we have to be open to receive it. That's a feminine quality. It's, it's uh, absolutely essential and central to the tradition of Kabbalah, which we're gonna talk about momentarily, which means reception. So alchemists also referred to an all-important agent which is necessary for the transmutation of, quote, base metals into, quote, gold. Or in other words, base modes of consciousness into higher forms of consciousness. This agent has been referred to as the elixir of life, the philosophical powder, and the quintessence. But by far, the most well-known name for this uh, agent of transformation was the philosopher's stone. The Philosopher's Stone represented man himself at the beginning of the process of self-mastery. It also represented the universal spark, the divine spark or divine essence, which is present in everything that has been created and thus also in the alchemist himself. The great work of alchemical transmutation is accomplished in three phases, which I'm gonna cover briefly here. They are 
these three phases of transformation in alchemy are all explained allegorically. The first phase was called nigredo. Nigredo means blackening in Latin. This is a state of putrefaction, of breaking something down, corruption, dissolution, individuation, descent into matter, descent into the undifferentiated and into chaos. It represents the soul's descent into the material plane and the suffering experienced in the physical world. Alchemists often represented the soul at this stage as the element of salt. Because salt is crystallized, it's hardened, it's fixed, just like an ego that is resistant to change. And I would suggest this is the state the world is in. We are in the state of nigrado, of blackening, of corruption, of putrefaction. And believe me, the vast, vast, vast majority of the people on this world are the salt. And I don't mean salt of the earth in the good way. They're crystallized, they're hardened, they're resistant to change and they need to be dissolved and broken down mentally, emotionally, spiritually. The second phase of alchemical transformation is albedo, which means whitening. Albedo represents the process of spiritual purification, the burning out of impurities from the salt or hardened ego. The salt in this step is reduced into quicksilver or mercury, which represents fluidity and the process of rapid mental, emotional, and spiritual change and the strengthening of the sacred feminine essence leading to the engagement of the imagination. The only substance, the only essence from which the elixir of life or the awakened or enlightened mind can then be made. This is why the dark occult want to stamp out the human imagination because they don't want the process of transformation to happen in our species. You know, this step is about when people start to learn the truth and are accepting of it. They have the mindset of openness and reception. Again, the date today is no accident. Highly synchromistic. 10-4. Reception. I got it. I get it. I've heard it. 10-4. Okay? <laughs> No accident, no such thing. As soon as Art suggested the date, I said, I love it. <laughs> it's all about reception, you know? So this step is the awakening process, the awakening step. It's when we recognize the world isn't what we thought it was and we start developing a desire for more than the base things in life. We start developing a desire to know the truth, the desire to reach higher realms of consciousness, the desire to better ourselves and be better than we were the day before. Well, we're going to start working upon ourselves by taking in the truth and letting go of beliefs and letting go of impurities in our thought processes and bringing our consciousness into alignment with truth and with morality. That's this step of the process. Whitening, purification, the burning out of impurities. It's a beautiful allegory if it's properly understood. The third and final phase of the alchemical, quote, great work is rubedo. Rubedo means reddening. The transmutation into gold or sulfur, uh, alchemical substances, gold or sulfur. And they represented purified and enlightened consciousness. The elemental fire of the philosopher's stone, again, that's why it was symbolized by a red elixir, often the philosopher's stone, often the philosopher's stone was depicted as a red stone itself. And that represented the unification of man, which was the limited being, with the divine, the divine will, often represented by a red color as well, the unlimited. So it's a paradox in terms. It's the microcosm joining with the macrocosm. It's man as the limited being in the physical domain having a 
spiritual learning experience here in the physical world, uh, coming into union with the divine spark or essence, uh, the unlimited force in, in, inherent in nature. That's alchemy in a, in a nutshell. Very simple explanation of the allegorical tradition. Again, this is rudimentary work. 